It's 1487, five years before Columbus's discovery of America. It is widely believed that the only way to reach India is overland and that the Indian Ocean is a landlocked sea. The Portuguese explorer Bartolomeu Diaz sets out to disprove this. He rounds the Cape of Good Hope in 1488, reaching the Indian Ocean via the Atlantic, setting Portugal on a course to building the first truly global empire. Unlike Spain, Portugal had concluded its Reconquista two centuries ago. After the country rebuilt itself from Moorish occupation, it was ready to expand. However, being boxed in from the east by its larger Christian neighbor Castile, later Spain, it only had two avenues of expansion open to it. One was into Moorish North Africa. In 1415, Portugal conquered Ceuta and made a few other smaller incursions in land. However, Moorish resistance proved too strong to continue expanding into this direction. The other option was to expand across the sea. Prince Henry the Navigator was a key proponent of this. The main rationale of exploring the sea was to reach the gold deposits that lay across the Sahara, thus bypassing the Muslims of North Africa who acted as a middleman. In 1434, Portuguese explorers managed to sail past Cape Bojador, previously thought unnavigable, and by the 1460s they reached the Gold Coast of Africa. In 1481 they founded Almina, one of their first fatorias or factories. A factory was a small trading post that was headed by a factor. The factor's duty was to conduct trade with the locals and build up a cache of goods that would be loaded on ships when they arrived. Two types of ships are used in this era. The lighter and faster caravel is rigged with latin sails, allowing it to sail against the wind, and the larger square carrack is used to transport goods and men. As the 15th century draws to a close, Portugal becomes the leader in naval technology, map making and navigation. An intense race develops in this regard with Spain, the other great naval power in the Atlantic. In 1492 Columbus discovers America, thought by many to be in fact India. India and its riches had been known to Europeans since Marco Polo. A very lucrative trade in spices and exotic goods is conducted by Arab merchants, who ferry these across the Red Sea to Egypt, to be picked up and sold on the European markets by the Venetians. Venice's legendary wealth is mainly due to this trade. If Portugal or Spain were able to find a sea route to India, they could buy goods directly from India, bypassing Arabs, Egyptians and Venetians, thus keeping all the profits for themselves. This is the main motivation behind the explorations of Columbus and Diaz. After Columbus's journey, a papal decree, the Treaty of Tordesillas, had been issued, dividing the new continent in two, the greater part becoming a Spanish domain, the lesser part going to Portugal. However, the Portuguese already know this new land is not Asia. With this premise, Vasco da Gama sets out to India on a royal commission with four ships and 170 men. He follows the same route Diaz took, sailing south until Cap Verde, then southwest and east, following the anti-clockwise South Atlantic current. He rounds the Cape and sails up the east coast of Africa. He is warmly received by the Sultan of Malindi, where he replenishes his supplies and takes on a few Arab or Jewish pilots. With their help he reaches the west coast of India in 1498 and arrives at the port of Calicut, the greatest city on the Malabar coast. He immediately begins to negotiate for pepper, however the meager trade goods he has are shunned by the Indian merchants. India's economy and manufacturing is far more advanced than that of Europe. Merchants will only take gold or silver, none of which Gama has. Hearing of his arrival, the ruler of the city, the Zamorin, grants him an audition. Gama brings him some gifts, the same European goods that nobody wants. The Zamorin is unimpressed and summons Gama to pay him the customs duties he owes. Since Gama has no coin, he loads up the little pepper he managed to buy and sets sail for Europe. When he arrives, he is greeted as a hero and a sensation. Direct trade with India is possible. All that Portugal has to do now is secure a favorable deal and set up a factory. A far larger armada of 13 ships and 1500 men is outfitted. Pedro Alvarez Cabral is chosen to lead the expedition. His mission is clear, establish diplomatic relations and open up a factory in order to secure a permanent trade route. 
He sets out in 1500, taking the same route across the Atlantic that Gama took, but with a wider berth, officially discovering Brazil. He erects a padrão, a stone cross used to mark Portuguese discoveries, and leaves behind a few convicts, the first European settlers in Brazil. Reaching the west coast of Africa, he makes stops on the island of Mozambique and in Malindi. At both places he is warmly received. In September he arrives in Calicut. He lavishes the Zamorin with precious gifts, and as a result he is allowed to erect a small factory in the city. But there is a problem. Arab merchants hold the monopoly in the trade of pepper, acting as middlemen between Indians and Europeans. Competition from the Portuguese means they might lose this lucrative position. They organize a boycott against the Portuguese, who in turn complain to the Zamorin. When the Zamorin fails to take action, the Portuguese decide to take things into their own hands and teach the Arabs a lesson. They seize an Arab ship and confiscate its cargo. Arabs are enraged and promptly stir up a riot. 70 Portuguese are killed and the factory in Calicut is burned to the ground. When the Zamorin takes the side of the Arabs, Cabral orders a bombardment of the city, leaving 600 dead. With Calicut in ruin, he sets sail and moves the center of his operations to Cochin. Cochin is currently in conflict with Calicut, so they welcome the Portuguese with open arms. Long established Arab merchants again try to sabotage the Portuguese, however the ruler of Cochin wisely sides with the Portuguese. Cabral opens a factory, loads up his ships and sets sail to Europe. The third armada, made up of only four ships, sets out before the second armada arrives. They are only equipped for trade, as it was assumed that Cabral was successful in establishing trade with Calicut. They find out on the outward journey that they are in fact sailing into war zone. Thus they avoid Calicut, and as soon as they manage to load up with pepper, they head back. Unhappy with Cabral's exploits, King Manuel appoints Vasco da Gama to lead the next armada consisting of 20 heavily armed ships and 1800 men. This mission is a punitive one, intended to extract reparations from Calicut for the massacre of the men of the second armada and to secure a monopoly on trade as well as expel the Arabs from India. On his way to India, Gama opens a factory in the friendly port of Mozambique and extracts tribute from the Sultan of Kilwa. Once in India, he immediately sets to work sinking an Arab ship and massacring all 300 passengers who are aboard. He sacks the port of Honor, then sets up a factory in Kananor, obtaining a fixed price for pepper and the expulsion of Arabs. Here he establishes the system called Cartais, whereby every ship sailing the Indian Ocean has to pay a small fee to Portugal in exchange for protection. Since such permits can only be obtained at a Portuguese factory, the Cartai system forces ships carrying a wide variety of goods to dock at Portuguese controlled ports, thus giving Portugal access to trade goods at favorable prices that in turn can be exchanged for even more trade goods. With his factory in place, Gama sets sail to Calicut, demanding the expulsion of Arab merchants and full compensation for the losses suffered by the Second Armada. When the Zamorin refuses, Gama bombards the port for two days, a spectacle never before seen on the Indian subcontinent. Satisfied with the destruction, he leaves a small force to blockade Calicut and departs for Cochin. Here he loads up with pepper, then sails back to Calicut for a final round of negotiations. To his surprise, he is met by 20 Arab ships and hundreds of Indian rowboats. Unfazed, he orders his ships to form up into a line and unleashes a fury of cannon fire, sinking several ships and scaring away the rest. To all accounts, this was the first major sea battle where the line of the battle tactic had been used. Captains no longer relied on boarding parties to capture enemy ships, but rather made use of cannon fire to sink them. With his business concluded, Gamma sets sail to Europe. The 5th Armada, a small fleet of 9 ships commanded by Alfonso de Albuquerque, leaves Portugal in 1503 before Gama arrives back. It reaches India just in the nick of time, as an army of Calicut is besieging Cochin. Albuquerque breaks up the siege, quickly moves to shore up his ally, and decides to build a small fort in the city with a permanent garrison, the first Portuguese fort in India. After this he sets sail to Calicut to conduct peace negotiations. 
His terms are the same, exclusive trading rights, the expulsion of Arab merchants and a new one, the handover of two military engineers clandestinely sent by Venice to strengthen the Zamorin's defense. The Zamorin is willing to agree to the original terms, but refuses to hand over the two Venetians. Negotiations break down, and Albuquerque instead sails south, to Kion, where he opens a new factory. Laden with pepper, the ships head back to Portugal. The same year, a sixth armada of 13 ships commissioned on Gama's report sails out. Its mission is to shun any negotiations and just blockade Calicut and protect existing Portuguese interests. Upon arrival, they make the same demands Albuquerque had made, and when the Zamorin predictively refuses to hand over the two Venetians, they begin to bombard the city. Satisfied with the result, they proceed to load up with spices, but learn that the Zamorin is preparing an attack against the allied city of Cananor. The Portuguese beat off the attack, and on their way back find an Arab-Egyptian fleet in Calicut's harbor that they promptly destroy. The Zamorin's hold over the Malabar coast seems broken now, however far bigger problems are yet on the horizon. 